But what I wanted more was peace. What I wanted more was to feel safe. What I wanted more was to feel love. You know what I'm saying? What I wanted more was to be calm. What I wanted more was to feel security. I didn't, all that shit didn't matter when it came to the, my inside. You know what I'm saying? And I prioritize that. I'm hungry, don't judge me. I intermittent fast. I don't know if I ever said that correctly. Intermittent fast. So I don't eat until 12. And then I eat until, well, I don't eat the entire time frame, but I'm only allowed to eat between 12 and eight. Right now, it's 10 something. So I made a smoothie bowl. Since I'm not actually like eating solids, anything that's not solid before 12. So teas and water and things like that. And I'm starving, so I had to make me one real fast. <laughs> if you're wondering, if you're wondering, it's just frozen mango, frozen banana, flaxseed, and then I added some uh, turmeric, the root, um, for its anti-inflammatory properties. Because as I learn and research and everything, everything just set your shit on fire on the inside. Where did we find this stuff? Where did we, where did we, what did we do? Why did we say, Regular natural whole foods were not good enough. Why did we have to want more? But the banana makes it so sweet. I don't add any sweetener to this. The banana makes it very sweet. I made a lot on accident, but I'm probably gonna smash it. So as you can see, today's video is sort of different. Um, it's not a vlog, nor is it a tarot reading or anything like that. So I am bringing a new style of content to my channel and it's not going to be like a podcast type segment with just me. I guess with just me. Maybe I'll add more people later. I don't know. But sometimes I go live on Instagram and just share different messages, um, mostly pertaining to the lessons that I'm learning at that time or lessons I've already learned that um, I feel on my heart to speak about so the collective can know um, how to get through things or overcome things or whatever. So I decided to bring those lives, I guess, to YouTube. Um, instead of going live on them, I will just be talking about them. Um, many other YouTubers do similar things um, where they just discuss pretty much how to heal and how to grow. That's all I really want to discuss and talk about. That's what all my music is about, my poetry is about. Like Everything's about growing and healing um, because I feel like I've had to heal a lot of different things. Um, when it comes to my life and just, you know, learn how to navigate and figure it out and how to become, you know, whole. Pretty much what I've done for myself, you know? And we always have healing, we always have work to do. I feel like whole, to be whole means that you, like you're aware, you know, like you know. Um, it's different when you're unaware of the behaviors, the addictions, where these things come from. Um, and how to work with them, how to merge your shadow self, you know, into who you are as a person. So anyways, without further ado, let's get started. So today's video is going to be about um, an experience I had, as you can tell from the title, um, getting an apartment with friends that I feel like pretty much changed the trajectory of where my life went. So like I said, watch my documentary if you haven't to get some background on who I am, to give a little bit of background on my experience with moving in with a friend. Um, things were not kosher <laughs> the, pretty much the entire time, even before moving in. I had that gut feeling when I decided to do it that I should not be doing this, um, but I decided to do it anyway because I firmly believe that God always has my back. And he did, don't get me wrong, he did. Um, but God will allow you to fall on your ass when he's telling you not to do something and you do it anyway, which is kind of what I, not even kind of, it's exactly what I did. Um, I guess I just wanted to be with my friends. So friends, and even before moving in, I was not financially set up the way that I should have been. Um, and that immediately took a turn for the worse especially because my portion of rent was $500 and I had I was under the impression when I got down there that it was going to be easy to find a job um was not 
and the jobs I ended up having um, either worked me to death or didn't pay me enough. Um, so my grades suffered. I was hardly going to class. I ended up literally leaving that semester with a 1.9 GPA for that semester. Um, I was not going to class. I was apologizing to my professors that, you know, I wasn't there, but I was mentally stressed out, financially stressed out. And not only that, but my roommates had turned into like, I don't know, evil people. I don't know. <laughs> because these are my friends, you know, and over a whole other situation, I became public enemy number one and was humiliated multiple times. It just turned, you know, it turned south. And, you know, like I said, everything happens for a reason. And God always had my back through the whole thing because that shit could have ended a whole lot worse than what it did. Um, but it resulted in me leaving. So I never completed that last semester before I graduated, which was really sad because I had my cap and gown and everything. I went to Xavier University of Louisiana, for those who don't know, um, my senior year, I got, that, that was when I decided to do this with my friends. And yeah, it just ended south. I ended up driving 11 hours by myself, me and my cat back home, um, which turned into this whole other thing after I got back home, which I'll give some brief insight into that, like after I share um, my list of questions. So I just have a list of questions that you should ask yourself before you decide to move in with another person or friends or whatever, but yeah, a partner, whatever, um, a sibling, because you're gonna be around this person's energy all the time. And not only that, but you have to understand what it means to be an individual before you can understand what it means to show up in a connection or a relationship wholly with someone else. Um, because my experience was pretty terrible, but my life as a result of that experience I can't say the same. I cannot say it, it is terrible. I can't say it has been terrible. As you can see, I'm in another apartment. <laughs> never, I've never been evicted from. I've never had to leave. I've never been more than, what, like a day late on a um, payment. I don't even think I've ever been a day late because they charge that shit anyway. <laughs> but, I mean, as you can see, I mean, you guys don't know what I look like in college, but um, my appearance has changed. My confidence has grown. I'm just... I'm a better person than what I was. And I really feel like the experience shaped me a lot, especially when it comes to people pleasing, self-worth, you know, when it comes to these friendships and you know, what you do or what you put on the line, you know, just to keep these friends, right? And there's two sides to every story. I'm sure, sure if she's seen this video, she would say, well, she did it, 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 I'm sure, I'm positive. It is what it is, this is mine. This is me, this is my channel. We're gonna talk about my side, okay? Fuck all that. So. I have a list of questions that you should ask yourself before moving in with someone else. And the majority of these answers should be yes before you decide to say yes to moving in with someone. So the first question, is this really my friend? This is for if you're moving in with your friend, if you're moving in with a significant other, a sibling, you can ask, is this person, pretty much the question is, am I really truly compatible with this person? Or am I forcing it? Like, am I um, somehow limiting myself, playing small, somehow like make, lessening myself to make this like a thing? <laughs> because that's definitely one of, was one of my problems with this particular friend. Um, I was definitely playing small. I definitely um, did not have the self-worth and the confidence that I do now. Uh, I allowed that friend to kind of dictate our relationship to the point where it felt like sometimes she was like in charge of the relationship. And I remember bringing this up once and I think it was kind of like rubbed off or brushed off or something. Um, but I was really forcing the relationship because I could, like I said, this shit happened Instead before of... we moved, moved in together. I could feel the weirdness and it just, it got sticky. It got really sticky, it got really nasty. I don't even know what else <laughs> to even say about that. It was some, um, it was some weird shit. And the fact that she was turning on me hearing me out or like, you know, being a friend and actually like not taking that shit personally or just expressing how she felt, you know, because I tried many times to make sure that she was cool with the fact that I'm getting too deep. I'm getting too deep. At the end of the day, do you really mesh with this person? Is this someone you have? I think that is one of my next questions. Yes, 
is this someone that you have experienced difficult situations together with? Like, is this someone that you have gone through hard times with? And if this is someone you have gone through hard times with, how have those hard times been handled? How has, how have those situations played out how have they come to a resolution if they ever did um did you like fall out with this person did y'all fist fight like were you able to talk about it you know and make up like how or even if it wasn't like between you two like how did you navigate whatever situation you were placed in with this person if it was something that you felt was handled very well you know very confidently very comfortably um everybody I'm not going to say everybody was happy because sometimes, you know, shit just happens. You're not always happy with the outcome of the situation. But that doesn't mean you can't handle it, you know, the way it should be handled, which should be, you know, calmly and understandably and, you know, things like that. So those questions kind of go hand in hand. Is this person really your friend? And have you ever experienced anything deep with them? Um, the answer should be yes to both of those questions before you decide to move in with somebody because... Once you move in, there's just so many other things that are tied together that if something goes wrong, there's so much more that's at risk. There's so much more um, that you have to just be accountable for and know how to bounce back from, you know, after you put your name on a lease with somebody, you know? And especially if this person, like, if you're feeling weird vibes, like, what? Well, how do you think they're going to react when they feel weird vibes, you know, in the same house as you? People do petty stuff all the time. I've witnessed it. People do crazy petty stuff. I've done petty stuff. Like, people do crazy shit, you know, when you live together. Because you live together, you're just, that's something that you can't easily get out of. That's a legal agreement, essentially. Um, kind of like a marriage, but it's just a short-term marriage. <laughs> Next question. Am I financially stable enough to commit to? This piece has nothing to do with her, nothing to do with my friends in this apartment. Um, it was because it was three of us living together. Nothing to do with my friends in the apartment. Everything to do with me because I wasn't even financially stable before I moved down there. I had just enough money to move into the apartment, didn't have anything to pay for furniture. So I had to ask for money um, and to which I got cussed out because my mom, she already didn't want me to get the apartment. So she was not happy with my decision. So when I asked for the money, she was, um, of course, understandably upset that I had to ask. Um, but then, even then, like, I just thought it would be a lot easier to find a job, you know? But when something is not for you, God will really reiterate that it's not for you. And he would not hire me. He would not hire me. He wouldn't hire me somewhere that um, was stable enough to pay my bills. You know, and the thing is, like, I don't even know what I thought because I was, I didn't know. I didn't know. That is why I'm coming to you now with these questions. And so hopefully you can assess, you know, where you're at in your journey. And if this is something that you really should be doing, because it's a, it's a commitment, but he wouldn't hire me. I couldn't find a job. I finally ended up finding something that was a valet job, but it was only paying me $7.25 an hour. Um, and I was working from 3 p.m. to 11 p.m., six days out of seven days in the week. And not only was I doing that, my classes on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday ended at 2.50. So I was busting my ass after class pretty much every day to get downtown to work this stupid dead-end job that wasn't even paying me enough anyway because every single thing I saw from that went to my rent, um, went to utilities. I even would skip class to go donate blood, donate plasma, I mean to make that little extra little money you get from donating plasma. Um, it it was um, a pretty vicious cycle that had me sucked in and I was victim to it because I had to pay these bills, otherwise I would have nowhere to live. So I was skipping class, wasn't even going to class, ended up getting another job that promised to pay more. They did not pay me more, they actually paid me they paid me more than my last job, but I was getting significantly less hours. So same hole I was in, if not worse, that I was not making enough money to support myself, sustain myself, keep gas in my car, go to class, eat. You know what I'm saying? Like there were so many nights that I either did not eat or I ate like a piece of bread from Cane's, Raising Cane's. I would go get a piece of bread and I had like a little cup noodle thing and I would eat some noodles and a piece of bread. like. I had so many nights where I cried. I mean, I was just so down. And the thing is, like I was being transparent the whole time about my situation and how hard it was, because it was hard to hide. I was depressed as fuck. And my friend seemed to be understanding, but you know, she hit the fan again. So the fact that I wasn't already financially stable and these people weren't really my friends, now I'm just 
I was ass out. So ask yourself if you are financially stable enough to commit. And when I say that, I mean, do you know where you're going to receive income once you move to this apartment? So do you have a job? Number one, is it a stable job? Is it something that brings in enough money? Um, are you going to have other obligations that get in the way of that? Because this is for people who want to move in with friends. So like I, I'm assuming we are around the same age, college level ages where we are moving out. And especially in this economy where the price of everything is higher. I feel like a lot of us are leaning towards getting roommates um, and things of that sort, um, which is understandable, you know, try to pay your bills the best way you can, but just make sure it's not at the expense of your own sanity and your own peace. It got to the point where I didn't even like living in the apartment. I didn't like going there after class. I didn't like staying there. I didn't like, I didn't like it. I didn't like being there. And that's supposed to be my home, like, you know, my sanctuary, my peace. And it just wasn't like I could hear my friend through the wall like talking shit about me to other people so like it was like a very difficult situation for me to cope with um very difficult like I said two sides to every story it is what it is next question do you have a plan b if this shit goes south what is your plan b I didn't have a plan b <laughs> I fell on my ass I ended up leaving the lease I didn't even break it I just left the apartment because I just refused to stay there um, in a home where I was being verbally abused, physically abused. Like we had gotten like two fights. I've never fought in my whole entire life until I got in that apartment. <laughs> um, so my choices were stay here, <laughs> you know, and be depressed, be sad, be can't afford it, you know, ass out, or do I go home? <sighs> so I took my ass home, I left, I went home. Um, I drove 11 hours from Indianapolis, I mean, from New Orleans to Indianapolis with my cat. And my mom was not happy to see me. As a matter of fact, she had been to New Orleans during that whole thing because I, she, I told her I needed like an intervention. Like I needed something because I, I was struggling. And like I said, watch the documentary so you can more so understand my relationship with my mom. But, you know, she saw the fight in front of her and maybe she's just so immune to it because my sister used to fight all the time, but I don't fight. That was never my thing. Um, she saw all that shit and she still wanted me to stay. She still, she was so focused on me getting that degree. Like she really wanted me to graduate. And I mean, the thing is, I really wanted to graduate. I was happy. I was excited, <laughs> you know, like I was the one who went through school. I was the one who was there for three and a half motherfucking years, giving away my time and my effort and my tears and my everything. Like, I, you know what I'm saying? Like I was the one there. I was the one doing it. I wanted that shit too. But what I wanted more was peace. What I wanted more was to feel safe. What I wanted more was to feel love. You know what I'm saying? What I wanted more was to be calm. What I wanted more was to feel security. I didn't, all that shit didn't matter when it came to the, my inside. You know what I'm saying? And I prioritized that. My mother doesn't. She didn't prioritize that. She prioritized what she had to do. And the thing is, she had to because she had five kids. So I think sometimes in her mindset, but I don't have no kids. All I have is me. So if I'm not okay, something's wrong. I could tell she didn't want me at home when I pulled up. She was not happy to have me there. So I actually ended up moving in with my dad, who I hadn't seen or spoken to in, I don't know how long, in years, 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 years. I had ended up moving in with him and that turned into this whole other thing. And if y'all want a follow up story on that, I will definitely leave a follow up story on what happened after I left college, went to my mom's and then moved to my dad's. It was what an experience. Um, so that was it. I didn't have a plan B. My plan B was go home, um, as opposed to maybe trying to move back on campus, but I was doing so bad, y'all. I was doing so bad. I had to retake classes. I'm like, I don't even know how to do this. I, and then on top of that was tuition. My mom, she was already up and paid with tuition. It was a lot, y'all. It was a lot. <clears throat> it was a lot. I'm thankful to be where I'm at now. In the space that I'm in now, and it's so important to remember to take time to just take a break and just think about where you are now. Because some of us have been through the ringer, and that's not even, I've been through so much, y'all. Watch my documentary. Please watch it. <laughs> Please watch it. It's a work of art. It is a work of art. I put my love into that. I put intention into that. I put my heart into that documentary. <sighs> It's very powerful, it's, about, it's powerful, just watch it. All right, next question. Do you have support outside of these friends that you're living with? Do you have support outside of this? Thank goodness, 
I had a friend <laughs> who isn't my friend today, but was my friend then. And thank goodness I had a friend because if I didn't have her, who knows what would have happened because she helped me pay for things sometimes. She was an emotional support friend. You know, she was, she was a good friend at the time. <laughs> at the time, she was a great friend. Um, very much so um, an important crutch, especially when it came to my spiritual journey and my spiritual evolution because I believe my spiritual journey truly started in that apartment. That was a very pivotal moment for me. Another story for another day, like I said, but if y'all want to know more details about that too, just let me know. I did talk about it in my documentary. <laughs> I'm gonna keep telling y'all to watch my documentary, but I did speak about it briefly in that. So um, she was a very good friend and luckily I did have that support that was able to help me through. That is very important for me. I felt like make sure you have support out elsewhere, you know? So if something does go wrong, I can call somebody. I have somebody who is willing to help me, somebody who knows what's going on, the situation, and somebody who, you know, I'm not alone, essentially, at the end of the day. And if you don't have support, honestly, I'm, I'm going to tell you that it's probably not the best idea to move in with somebody else, especially if this is somebody that you don't consider support. You know what I'm saying? And that goes back to question one, is this really my friend? If that's really your friend, you'll have that support. The answer to that question should be yes, and you'll be fine. If you don't have support, most likely that's not somebody who's really your friend because how are they your friend if they are not supporting you? They ain't. Next question. <laughs> so this is the next and last question. I'm sure there are more questions you could ask, but this is my last question to you. Do you have a reliable source of transportation? That, that is so important. And I, I mean reliable. If you're used to taking the city bus, you're used to taking Ubers and Lyfts and you can support that in your budget and everything like that, kudos to you. You got transportation, that's reliable for you. You know how the bus system works, you know how to, you know, and it can da 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 whatever, you can do what you gotta do. And you're maybe you're moving somewhere where a lot of stuff's in walking distance and you know, you don't need, fine. That means you're cool. If that is not your reality, you need a reliable source of transportation because you cannot rely on anybody else. At the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? All you really got is you. At the end of the day, it's you. It's on you. You are the person who's going to save you. You are the person who's going to get you to where you want to be and to where you need to be. You are that person. So you need to know how you're going to get from point A to point B. And if something happens, you know, Hopefully, you're living with somebody, a supportive friend, you know what I'm saying, who will help you during your hard times. If your car breaks down, car got to go in the shop, something like that, you know what I'm saying? Somebody who will support you, somebody who don't mind helping you. Hopefully, you are moving in with someone like that. If you're not moving in with somebody like that, don't even do it. And I'm saying this, this didn't even happen to me when I was down there. Like, my car was kind of unreliable at times, but it always worked, you know? Like, I never had to rely on either one of my friends for their vehicles for temptation, thank God. Um, because had it come down to it and my car had broke down or something, I would have been asked out because I would have been relying on my other friend who was, you know, supportive and that then I'm relying on her for more shit, you know, not even just my car. Now I mean not even just like, you know, emotional support and money, but now your car too. Like I feel like that would have been a lot for her. But I'm very thankful for the support I had during that time. So to wrap this video up. Majority of your answers to those questions should be yes. Honestly, if I were you, I would make sure all of them are yes before I move in with somebody else, just to save yourself the heartache and the, you know, extra experiences. And we all have journeys for a reason. We all go through things for a reason. I cultivated so many lessons. I cultivated so much growth, so much confidence, and so many different things, you know, just by living in that apartment, from dealing with what I dealt with, so much strength I didn't know I had. You know, because I don't fight, but shit, I showed up. <laughs> I definitely showed the fuck up in that first one anyway. The second one was kind of like unfair. But the first one, I showed up. I ain't even gonna hold you. It's just, I don't know. And I'm not saying I went through that so I can learn how to fight, you know, but I did gain such a deeper like sense of my spiritual self, you know, and my spiritual journey and what it means to be spiritual. How to connect with my grandma, you know what I'm saying, who's always with me on the other side and just how to navigate life, how to cope, you know what I'm saying? How to heal myself, like how to live with myself after these experiences. Cause I mean, shit didn't stop there. I came home and got evicted. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, You always gonna have lessons to learn. You always gonna have more stuff to learn. If you wanna know more about my eviction, 
that's honestly a very good topic y'all ain't even gotta say shit i got y'all <laughs> but yeah so that wraps up today's video i hope you found some helpful tips in here hopefully you make a little checklist for yourself um just to save yourself you know the burden of dealing with unnecessary drama and unnecessary bullshit essentially so these types of videos will be happening more on my channel <laughs> Um, I'm really hoping and praying for a positive feedback. I really feel like I will because this is just coming from me. This is just my own experience. Hopefully my experience will help and heal you forward on your personal journey. I love you. And until next time. Big wheels keep rolling, rolling outside. 29, G5, Seaside. I've been losing friends and finding peace. But honestly, that sound like a fair trade to me if I ever heard. Outside, front line, south side. I've been losing friends and finding peace. Honestly, that sound like a fair trade to me. Look, don't invite me.